This is the story of Cassette Boy in 2011. A world class collage pioneer drawing inspiration from popular culture. Use the digital culture as source material. Things like uh, the robots. Are you a robot? I am not a robot. And the cutaway bits and pieces of everyday life. It's yeah. not a great talent. <laughs> Stupid thing for people who've got you know, nothing better to do. Well, who's making it? Probably had a team of people working it. Oh, Designers, yeah. editors, you name it. It's a whole team of people. And that's sad, mm. you know. Um... Well, moving on to something different now. And it's a sort of joke. And you should enjoy it. Let's get this thing started. I think I've got a horn. This is Downton Abbey. Ripe for the plucking. Golly, my corset's tight. Would you be an angel and loosen it a bit? You don't think you're being a bit obvious? So, so, something's come up which has taken me quite by surprise. It's very hard for the girl, Mr. Carson. Particularly hard on the younger maids. Quite a treat for the ladies. Sorry to disappoint you. I'm not sure he's got one. No, oh, I get about, Mrs. Hughes. I get about. I do hope you'll come and inspect my little cottage. What a ghastly prospect. I would rather be put to death, my lord. All this unbridled joy has given me quite an appetite for pushing into a man's bedroom uninvited. Oh, God. I think I'm going to be sick. Cora won't have it in the bedroom. She did wonder about the kitchens, but I couldn't see the point. We may have to have a maid in the dining room. Fly me, that's a thought. I'm afraid I'm going to have to sit in your presence, my lord. She was dirty, noisy, and quite enjoyable. Me, Mr. Carson. No, Daisy, not you. His lordship really cuts maids in the dining room. Don't say anything to your mother. I shouldn't really have told you. The ladyship will have a smack bottom if she's not careful. I certainly hope so. May I come in? Oh, that's very kind of you, my lady. Do you think you should? I think he found it all quite exciting. I know I've been a disappointment to you. I let myself get flustered. I regard that as highly unprofessional. It won't happen again. You mustn't be too hard on yourself. I know it would be better to do it in broad daylight. That'd be nice. I'll do it. We'll all do it. I'd rather do it myself. Quite right. Touch wood. I never stop touching it. I never think about anything else. I'm sure you enjoy it. I please myself these days. What about you, Mosley? I should very much like to hold on to it, with Mrs. Crawley's permission. It's very middle class. That lets me out, thank heaven. We take you now to Washington. Good evening. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States, who's responsible for the murder of Osama bin Laden, the United States located bin Laden nearly 10 years ago. Over the last 10 years, we knew where bin Laden was. Today, counterterrorism professionals launched Operation Get Bin Laden and Operation Kill Bin Laden. I met repeatedly with my national security team as we developed their names. After a firefight, the United States killed Osama bin Laden, and tonight, the bin Laden family has lost a loved one. The empty seat at the dinner table, children forced to grow up without their father, that is what we've done in our heartless, vicious attack. Tonight, the American people came together and took care to avoid human dignity. Meanwhile, Osama bin Laden was collapsing to the ground, black smoke billowing up from his body, leaving a gaping hole and blood. Tonight, we are once again reminded that America can do whatever we want, thanks to the tireless and heroic work of our military, killing thousands around the world. watch television all day long. The idea was to record in detail the minutest observations of ordinary life. Nothing was too trivial for them to note it down. I don't know if it's coming from my house or somebody else's, but I can smell onions. I've got an absolute nose for old railways. I can smell an old railway about five miles away. I can get a train all the way to France. I'm going to Turkey for my holidays. I can no longer go to Fulham. I'm Ivy and I'm 91 years old. I'm Joan and I'm 18. I'm a style icon. Good for you. Where I live, there's a car park. I don't actually have a garden. I'd love to build a little golf course, even if it was only three holes. I haven't eaten kids.
with me for ages. I had two fish. I had sheep's testicles in Mongolia and they weren't very nice. I like the first spring because it's really nice. See, I like ketchup. I am never off the toilet, it's ridiculous. <laughs> How many blokes do you know who got that on their CV? I track magpies. I love the wildlife. I don't really like the vegetables and all that. I think Facebook is a waste of time. I remember my mother and my father. I do not want my goonies chopped off by all the women in the country. I'm a girl. Do I still play with Lego? I couldn't possibly answer that. I'm a skeletric enthusiast. I like fun. I've got one of those... Uh, Old Volvo, do you know the 240GL? I've got jumpers. I've got quite bony buttocks. I've got three blue Peter badgers. Just a little while ago, I was in a cafe across the road from here, eating a sandwich. So beautiful. Oh, here we go again. Put on a brave face, everybody. It's more celebrity. Chumps talking rubbish. Sadly, it involves Jodie Marsh. And if that wasn't bad enough, then be topic. Let's see if they're stupid enough. A pair of boots. Yep, yeah. they're stupid enough. Looks like this might be the start of something awful. <sighs> Jody Marsh is competing against three other celebrities in that favourite pastime of all celebs, Best Celebrity Poo. <laughs> so there it is, more dodgy looking... Shite. That's one word for it. Somebody fetch me a bucket. This is a, a simple take playback. Oh, this is a, a simple take playback. Oh, I love that. Thank you very much. If I catch them, I'll be phoning the police. A digging his hole, all in the ground, so big and sort of round it was. I don't love cats like you do. Coming up on Embarrassing Bodies, see another woman's vagina, some pictures of penises and the biggest breasts that Dr. Christian has ever seen. I've been very excited about you coming in. Up next, testicles. Around a quarter of men have them. They're harmless and your GP can either cut, scrape or freeze them off. If you're over 60 or 50 in Scotland, you have cancer. Treatment can involve having flying lessons, a few bites of pizza and a joint. Always drink between six and eight glasses of strong, smelly urine. Drink so much that it makes you vomit. There are plenty of good side effects. It's common to get roast potatoes in the vagina. She's got a roast potato right up there. That's an exceptionally heavy period. Next time on Embarrassing Bodies. Never stick anything in the head of the penis. Not even bogies. If it's such a bad idea, why are the government even thinking about it? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the leader of the Conservative Party, David Cameron. In a Conservative Britain, there aren't many reasons to be cheerful. We are still the arrogant, callous, ruthless, wicked Tories. And you know what? We won't help anyone because we don't care. Ladies and gentlemen, please will you welcome the leader of the Liberal Democrats, Nick Clegg. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But sorry isn't good enough. Because if you're poor, you're still far less likely to go to university than if you're better off. I am in public service to protect the rich. Nothing else matters at all. And my commitment to the next generation is simple. The Liberal Democrats will fail you. I will let you down. Don't get me wrong. I have no morality. I want to get the NHS and set it on fire. I want to say something to teachers, doctors, in fact, to everyone who works in our public services. You can stay at home in despair and wait for your fortnightly appointment at the job centre. The Liberal Democrats have fallen blindly in love with the Conservative Party. Don't they see they have turned to the dark side? So let's always remember, I'm just like David Cameron. Today's our wedding anniversary, by the way. Stop, 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 stop. That's terrible, that's terrible. It's a disgrace. Embarrassing. Um, as embarrassing, for example, if Nick and I had started to do a rap. I don't know about that. <laughs> if that's what you want, I'm going to give it to you. I can do this. It can be done. I am not one of those ego-crazed pop stars. I'm certainly better than One Direction. It will be followed by Nick Hewer, who needs no introduction. Well, better late than never, I suppose. Now I know what pecking order means. You sell the sizzle, not the sausage. Love it. Brilliant. Good. No, that's good. Nearly as good as me. I like people that shout their mouths off very, very well. That rings my bells. Don't they ring bloody bells with you? I'm as hard to play as a Stradivarius, the very best in the country. Why am I telling these people what they already know? Throw everything in. Bring it to a crescendo. I'm singing the songs all day long. All day long. Alan Sugar's singing the songs for real. I love a deal. And I love it when the deal goes together. Ka-ching. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Kiss, 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 kiss. It don't mean jack shit. Watch my lips. You're all over it like a tramp on chips. I'm singing the songs all day long. All day long. Alan Sugar's singing the songs for real. I'm just a bloody nutter. rat a -tat. rat a -tat. Bang, bang, bang. I went there. I done it. I conquered. I beat everybody. That's what I do all day long. I'm singing the songs all day long. Can you top that? Look at that. Oh.